Hello, everyone. Welcome to Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry Daily Devotions. I'm Pastor Judine Deerwachter, co-pastor with the MCM, and I'm here today to bring you a daily devotion on Psalm 142. And again, a mention all week long, I've been coming to you with a wardrobe color of blues, greens, and teals for the shout out of apology. Blues, greens, and teals are the colors that represent apology. And on behalf of myself and on behalf of the whole human race, I am giving the message of apology to all persons that have been persecuted, that have received injustices by the hands of abuse of power. We see it today um, in this absolute health crisis, this universal health crisis that we're in, where the abuse of power has manifested in ways that are unprecedented in our times. So racism and hatred and violence and bigotry, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a shout out of apology to hundreds and hundreds of years of the most inhumane, barbaric treatments towards our brothers and sisters in the world who have been at the hands of injustice because of abuse of power. So that's the context of which I come to you today and this whole week. So without further ado of that, let's take a look at Psalm 142 today. It's uh, super short, so I'm going to read it to you in its entirety from the Jerusalem Bible Translation. To Yahweh, my cry, I plead. To Yahweh, my cry, I entreat. I pour out my supplications. I unfold all my troubles. My spirit fails me, but you, you know my path. On the path I follow, they have concealed a trap. Look at my right and see, there is no one to befriend me. All help is denied me. No one cares about me. I invoke you, Yahweh. I affirm that you are my refuge, my heritage in the land of the living. Listen to my cries for help. I can hardly be crushed lower. Rescue me from persecutors stronger than I am. Free me from this imprisonment. I will thank your name once more in the assembly of the virtuous for the goodness that you show me. So friends, this Psalm is attributed to King David. It's literally entitled, A Prayer of a Hunted Man. And it's attributed to King David to have been said, spoken, uh, written in a time where he was being persecuted by the current king, Saul, who was the first uh, of the Hebrews kings. They in the past had not, never had kings before. They had prophets and judges, etc. But they wanted to be like everybody else and they all wanted a king too. So yeah, well, you know, you get what you pray for, right? And they ended up getting this king, uh, Saul, who was absolutely awful, absolutely awful. Well, the good news, of course, is, is that, you know, he kicks off and then David does become the king and he becomes a incredible king. And I think the reason that David was an incredible king is because he was a man who had been hunted. He is a person who he, he came from very humble roots. And he was a person who feared his life. He was a person who, as this psalm is attributed to, that he was hiding out in a cave, um, being hunted down by Saul. And the, his fear forced him to know prayer by heart. His fear forced him to be on his knees, literally, you know, face in the mud. Dear God, you know, help me. And what I appreciate about this is that his dedication and his devotion and the quality of a leader that he became is because he had been in dark places, that he had been in dark places in his life um, in, in very young, in a very young age. So again, it was like a... Like he developmentally grew 
from a sense of humility of being in a dark place. And really the beauty of it is, it, is his um, dedication to prayer while he is in this dark place as a young man. And what I'm loving about this is that when I was young, I was in dark places in my life. Um, I grew up in an environment that had a lot of a, a lot of fear, tumultuousness, and violence, and I didn't know to pray. And I remember hiding, you know, in a closet and not knowing to pray. And so you're literally just stuck there with yourself and a ton of fear. And it it. In my maturity today, where I'm at today, I realize what an absolute privilege it is to know to pray. What a privilege it is to be in a dark place and know that you can you can bring a sense of energy, a, a profound sense of energy for rescue and relief uh, to to God from this really, really dark place. It strengthens you to be able to do it. It's it's really profound. And I think it's what uh, attributed to giving David this quality of, of kingship is that he was rooted. Um, he was rooted in the depths of fear, but in a most humble way, but he knew who to ask to protect him. And when he matured and ultimately became king, it attributed to the value of who he was as a person. Um, I think, unfortunately, but like many of us, once he was in his palace, I wonder, I think he prayed a little bit less. Uh, but he always seemed to come back around and, and, and remember who he was and, who he, and whose he was. And that is um, a son of God, you know, a created human being out of love. So I hope this was helpful for you today, friends. Take that which has been a dark and scary cave in your life and give it meaning. Give it meaning by giving it to God and making good of it. That's crucifixion to resurrection. That's the life we live as uh, practicing Christians. I hope this is helpful today. Um, I'm sorry if you heard my little dog, Sherlock, in the background barking at the uh, mail carrier. He just wants to have a voice in the world, too, I suppose. Anyway, have a blessed day. Remember to live to love. Bye now. See you next time.